Okay, uh, good evening once again, guys. Uh, today, I just want to go from the beginning and till the end, what you're supposed to do in your article. And it, I believe that it's gonna help you as well in writing your thesis because we're gonna consider all the stuff. And that's why I would like you to have the data to ready to run for regression analysis that we're gonna start with. And in the model, uh, I uploaded this data, this article, is robust standard errors for panel regression with the cross-section dependence. And it's very good article uh, that, that has been published. And what it measures, uh, there are different ways of doing the regression analysis. And by doing those regression analysis, what kind of problem do they correct or do they take into consideration while running so that your model will be efficient and uh, best fitted. We know that uh, when you do just OLS or ordinary least square, it's not uh, enough to come up with the best fitted or well validated model because we want our estimation to be robust in order to run it to have the robust estimation. And we said that, uh, let me just write it down. Before running the test, uh, so before running the regression analysis, we need to make a test to, to see whether the, everything is good or not, to run a simple OLS. Before running regression analysis, we do the following the test. First, we test for stationary. But in your case, I don't need you for stationarity. I showed you last time how to test it for stationarity. I'm gonna show you again if you want for, or we call it a unit root test. But in your thesis, when, you got, when you're gonna write your thesis, definitely do this stationarity test. It is very important. It shows whether you should proceed with the OLS or co-integration approach. But we assume that our data is stationary. I checked it, it's stationary. But when you do your uh, dip, uh, diploma writing, your thesis, then you should go with the stationarity. If it's not stationary, then you should do another analysis. But in our case, it's stationary. We are proceeding with uh, least square. So we're gonna have the same. So another, uh, Another test we do is multi, oops. Multicollinearity test using the with uh, approach, variance inflationary factor. The third, we're gonna test for autocorrelation the fourth, we're gonna test for heterosticity. And the fifth, there is a cross sectional dependency. But for us, what we're gonna do is just these three tests, okay? But this two stationary and cross-sectional dependency, you will do it uh, in your diploma. For us, what is important, for, for example, if you want to write a paper, if you do this analysis, this test, then your paper is free of errors. Of course, there's another problem, which is called endogeneity issue that we don't want to see, but main five issues related to do the empirical analysis, it is this is, this are here that you are given. Stationary, multicolonarity, autocorrelation, heteroscedastic, and cross-sectional dependency. But we're, gonna con we're going to consider only the, these three. Multicolonarity test, it is done due to that independent variables are correlated. That correlation gives you a, a biased estimation. Your estimation is not trustworthy. So the estimation is changed, the result that he gives. So this is the problem when the independent variables are correlated. Afterwards, biased estimation.
And another thing that we talked about is autocorrelation. We said that the error terms are correlated. This is as well give you the bias estimation. So basically, these all uh, problems uh, brings you uh, to bias estimation. This is the thing that we don't want to happen. Otherwise, our the model will not be trustable so that we can run another. And heteroscedasty we said is showing distribution of error term or residuals. It shows whether it's a normally distributed or in an abnormal way, which cannot be predicted, heterogeneous. So that's why we need to consider the heteroscedasticity as well the problem. So distribution of the term is not normally distributed. Okay, these three things that we're gonna consider. So before running any regression analysis. So uh, starting with what we do. So I'm typing here start. I hope you are going with me as well, guys. So we are starting the, the running the model. You don't have to write these things. I'm gonna upload it in the Moodle, okay? You just start doing your regression analysis with the data open starter. Open starter, guys. So uh, we start with the multicollinearity. We start with the multicollinearity test. So we go to file, import, Excel spreadsheet, browse, data. So your data is attached to this and we import as first row as the variable names. You choose the proper data and press OK. Are you all doing this? Did you, were you able to get it? So we, once imported, I have to declare the data set. First, before running the multicollinearity test, we import data. Second, declare data set XT set ID and year or whatever, how you just record. If it's year or if it's years, it depends how did you name your variable. Okay. Once it's done, we just run the regression. Regress. Small letter. Regress your dependent variable. That variable. In that variable. That's it. You run the model. So, uh, XT set. Equity. So this is my model. Return on assets, total, equity, uh, total equity over total assets, NPL, CI, liquidity, mm, political stability, control corruption. This is what I have it. 
and let me add GDP as well. So GDP as well as added. So I have this how many variables? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight variables. So I'm running uh, not XG set, but this is my variables, but I need to declare first. I'm declaring, so I declare, then I do the regression analysis. I just put this variable, my dependent variable is return on assets. I run the model, I get the results. Okay, I got the results. So first of all, I need to test whether the model is uh, free of multicollinearity, which means that these independent variables are not highly correlated with each other. Uh, what, I can, what I'm doing, first of all, I can run the correlation analysis first. Corel. Put the model and see the correlation. So this is what I do first, correlation. From here, I can see how the variables are, whether correlated, whether it's a higher than 50% correlation. So let me just copy this and put it here. So for multicollinearity test, I'm running the Corel. For variables. Okay. In here, I can see that political stability with the control corruption is highly correlated. 74%. There's another one, uh, cost to income, but it's dependent variable. It's another story. Okay, uh, but we need to run the, uh, the variance inflationary factor uh, that will give us a more realistic picture of multicollinearity. So this table, you can use it at least for prediction to see how it affects the kind of direction, it shows the direction of the variables. So let us use the start with command that will show the variance inflation. So our, uh, my variance inflation factor is less than five. It should be less than five in order to be accepted as free of multicollinearity. So I'm using this as start with model, as start with, and in the bracket, it should be less than five in order to be free from multicollinearity. Then I proceed. Okay, multicollinearity is done. We, we got it. There is no problem with the multicollinearity. Now another step is to go with the outer correlation to see the outer correlation, whether there is an outer correlation in the model or not. So I'm doing the following, XG serial, putting this model, just give a comment, XG serial, put your model, and run the so I can see that my p value is less than 5%, which shows that there is a autocorrelation of first order. So XT serial, you put the model here, P. Value should be less than 1% or 5% or 10%. So it should be less than one of it. So there is autocorrelation. There is auto. There's outer correlation. So if it's less than this, it shows that there is outer correlation. Okay. 
Okay. Once we've done it, I hope you are following me. Were you able to do it? So we did X this uh, for autocorrelation. The next step is to do for heteroscedasticity. So heteroscedasticity, uh, we need to run the following model. We do uh, following the coding, XTGLS is equal to my model. Open the uh, IGLS is equal to panels at uh, row I close it just run it before it runs but let me make here something This outer correlation test, and we have heteroscedasticity test in here. Okay. Professor. So, yes. No, I couldn't get this XT serial. Uh, you couldn't get it? Yes, it gives me a mistake. Uh, what it gives you? Can you share your screen? Or just yes. tell me what it does give you? Uh, common XT serial is unrecognized. Okay, then type uh, following, find it. Mm -hmm. XT serial. Did you type it? Yes. Okay, then uh, it should lead you to this. No, no, couldn't find it. Okay, what, do you have internet connection? Yes, you should, of course, find it. Can you share your screen? Yes. Can you okay. see? Yes, yes, we can see it. Yeah, Look, can. Uh, type the find it together. Oh. Find it should be together, not separately written. And write XT serial. XT serial. Yeah. Okay. So you should receive one page, okay. Now uh, for second one, this SG32, not the frequently asked question, but SG33, type this SG0039. Let's press on it. Yes, press it, press. Uh, click here to install. Okay. Close it. Just close it. No, pr press the X here. Okay. Now, uh, run the model again. Yes, press enter. Okay, great. You have autocorrelation in your model. Okay, you got Thank it? You. You're welcome. Did anyone have the problem? Okay. So once we tested for autocorrelation, now we are sure there is a no multicollinearity, but there is autocorrelation. It is the biggest problem that should be solved. That, that cannot be ignored while running the regression analysis. Another thing that we should take into consideration is heteroscedasticity. And for heteroscedasticity, we said uh, we are running the following model. We, I, I already run it. 
This is the equation I type it, xt GLS, generalized least square. This is what it means. Then you put the model, IGLS panels hetero. Okay, you're running this model. Then once you run it, let me just cut it. I'll put it here, okay. Another story that I should go with, I should store this, I should save it. So estimate store hetero. Okay, I'll, I will just name, this is my, I'm going to just name it as hetero, okay. I stored it. So let me just save this one as well. So I run the model, I got the result. Here you go, general least square with a heterostatic. Okay, then uh, I should follow with uh, formula. I should run with the GM, GLS without heteroscedasty, same model, but without these panels, okay, hetero. It should be like this. I'm running. Okay, it's a homoscedastic. It's just opposite it was before. Same, I'm saving this as not hetero, but homo. So first I run this model. Then I'm running again est uh, estimation with homoscedastic, storing it, okay. To continue with the test, I continue with the following, like typing local DF degree of freedom E to Egan number. It's just a coding. You don't have to know the meaning of these variables. But if you really would like to know the details, how they're derived, then there is a book which is given like by Woodridge. You can just read it and you can understand better like economic analysis, but I suggest you not to read it because you, what is the matter for you to understand there are, there are problems and you need to solve that problem. Don't go too much into details how they are derived and what is the problem and how can be solved with the uh, equation in mathematically. But what is suggested to you, you have to know there are problems and what is the uh, consequences of those problems and how to solve it. That's it. How to test it and how to solve it. This is the main issues you should be concerning. Okay, let me just save this as well. Local D, D F equal sign E, open the bracket N with a capital letter with the minus and under the underdone G, close the bracket and minus one. Error test. Hetero and homo df one, oops, 104. Okay, it shows that in my model there is a heteroscedasticity. So likelihood ratio shows me that there is a heteroscedasticity in my model. So I have to take something into consideration to do the very important thing, like not to run just oil. So in here, I cannot run a normal ordinary least square because it's not allowed, otherwise my estimation will not be very beneficial and will not be very trustful, trustful. like it will not be a robust result. So I have to run, so this is the start, let me just highlight. 
and we uh, did everything just before the test now we're going to regression analysis itself so we said uh, we can run OLS we can run OLS or we can run fixed or random effect effect models third GLS sorry FGLS and PCSE so OLS, OLS is the ordinary least square, like there is no stationarity, there is no autocorrelation, there is no heteroscedasticity, there is no problem with that. So we can use this. However, uh, in our model, as I, we realized that there is an ordinary uh, autocorrelation problem and there is a problem of heteroscedasticity. So it's better to use fixed or random effect model with some corrections. It can be used. So they can be used with some correction commands. However, we are not going to use it because uh, the problem of uh, this, we understood that we don't use the OLS, it's definitely, because it assumes that the model is purely like an angel, like we can use it, but we just ignore this model we are not trusting this uh, method we are moving to fix and random effect models but we say that they can be used but with some correction commands however it it takes into consideration uh, outer correlation and heteroscedasticity but it does not take into consideration the cross-sectional dependency this is another problem uh, that's why it is not advised to use it because it doesn't take into consideration uh, if you remember at the beginning of the class today, I told you to download this article and see and read it. It's a very good article. Uh, look at here. Guys, are you with me? Hope there is no internet loss connection. Yes. Okay. Now, here it shows uh, which option that produced the robust standard errors to estimate the linear panel models. For panel data like when you use uh, fixed and random effect this is the like it just consider heteroscedasticity and autocorrelation xt regular is just autocorrelation with uh, auto regressive model one so we don't use it we don't use so we are gonna use it only these two xt gls and xt pc pc se so these two models are considering everything all the problems that we have so it's better to use these two models instead of this for example when you run your model and you find it out there is no outer correlation there is no heteroscedasticity and there is no cross-sectional dependence then just use OLS if you find there is a problem with outer correlation and heteroscedasticity then use with uh, a fixed effect and random effect but with some correction models corrections are here like we see robust or clustering but we don't use it the best that considers everything is this xtgls or we call it another way fgls which is feasible feasible generalized least square And this one, panel corrected standard error. So these are just names. Guys, are you with me like about this uh, last? last uh, two like fgls and pcse like feasible generalized least square and so we're gonna use this two yes. 
They are all easy. They are no problem with the commands. They are straightforward. But you need to understand one thing that they do correct all the problems. The problems which we have autocorrelation, heterosidacy, and cross-sectional dependency. This is another problem. It is the problem of uh, when the errors are highly dependent. Highly dependent. So they are not correlated, but they are highly dependent. So this highly dependency uh, or error dependency, it gives you a biased estimation as well. So estimation results are not robust. So we should take something very good. So when we take the CGLS and the PCCS, E and we do consider these all problems. Multicolonality, autocorrelation, heterosidacy, and the cross-sectional dependence. So our model will be like an angel after correction, after using this TGLS. So then we can say it is good. Okay, but then uh, they're both they consider, okay, there is no problem. But what is the difference between this and this? When we should use CGLS and when we should use PCS? So the meta, uh, for example, this guy, the article says here, whoever wrote the article here, these guys uh, say that uh, Ho Chile, like Ho Chile in 2007, who published this article, he said, use this panel correction model when, when the number of the cross sections, like the cross section, number of cross section, I mean, uh, my independent variables, So these are the number of cross sections. So I'm gonna use, according to this article, according to Hoechele, he said, if the number of cross sections, if these variables that I'm underlining are lower than number of the years, then it is better to use CGLS, feasible generalized least square. If number of sections are more than the times, for example, in this data, I use from 2011. So time is 2011 and 2018, which is seven, eight years, okay? Eight years. But uh, but when it comes to the number of cross sections to n, I have more than 10 here. I think I have 16. I haven't counted yet, 16 variables. So, if this is the case for me, for my case, what should I use? Panel corrected or GLS, which one? I'm asking you guys. In my case, I have for example, yes, maybe. I have n is equal to 16, and the years time is equal to 8. So look at here. If n is more less than t, is less than time, you are required to use the feasibility, feasible, least generalized least square. If the vice versa, you should use this panel corrector. So for my case, it is better to use this. So Anel, in your, in your data, how many variables you are using? Sorry, not the variables, uh, countries. How many countries you are using? 
I'm sorry, we are not considering the uh, variables. Number of cross sections, it should be like ID by ID countries. I have nine countries. Then still I'm, I have to use the PCCE. But for your case, how many countries do you have? Um, Jaras, Madiar? Uh, how many countries do you have? Is it CIS? Yes. Uh, no. No, no, not SNG is CIS. Your custom union. Uh, custom union. It's five countries. Oh, yes, yes. You have five, yes? And timing? Since 1993, 2017, yes? So it's more mm -hmm. than 20. So which means you have to use feasible GLS. Mm, okay. Okay. But for my case, my data is based on banks. It is even not nine countries. It is even 359 banks. So it, it depends on your ID. Your data is based on country base. So it's five less than timing. So you have to use uh, FGLS. Okay, let's go ahead. We tested for everything. Now we need to run the, reg the analysis, the regression analysis itself, the model. Like we are running FGLS, okay? We are running this FGLS. So what we do, first of all, XT, uh, let me put the number, okay. Here you go. I'll put it like this directly. Okay, it is same from the previous when we were testing for heteroscedasticity. However, with some addition corrections, for R1, like autoregressive of order one, autocorrelation of order one. Oops, sorry. Here is not regularly. Okay, I have some mistakes in here. What could be that mistake? Uh, I had one. Just a second. Let me check everything. What could be the mistake? Uh, or let me just run without panels. Nation. Or a dozen option is not allowed. Okay. I'm missing here something. Exigelous. Yes, of course. Of course. Kana. Uh, this is the should work actually. Here is not regularly spaced and doesn't have intervals of delta. Use the force option to treat the intervals as if they were regular. Okay, I have to treat some of the variables. A second. Uh, okay, it works. 
No, okay, that's elastic. Okay, then for for IR one. Let me check my ears. Uh, guys, can you try this to run in your model, please? So put your data, panel, hetero, core, AR1. Just run in your model. Does it give you the same mistake? So there is a problem with the core AR1. So it means that the year should be forced. It gives a mistake. Me too. The same mistake like this? Year is not regular as this? Okay. First option to treat the intervals as they were regular. Okay, let me try another one. XT CE. H Y H give me a mistake. X C C E. Okay, wait, well, not recognize, which means uh, find it. Panel corrected. Panel correct. Oops. My bad. No time periods are common to all panels. Cannot estimate disturbance covariance matrix using the case-wise inclusion. There is a timing problem in my. You have any missing values here in timing? I really don't get it why it doesn't. So, uh, just a second. First option to treat the intervals through the regular. It's not a correlation in fixed effect model application. No. First data, there are many options. Hmm. 
Мне нужен другой спейст. Окей. Okay. Here we go. Also found two use blah blah blah. Here it works. So new does have the word which error the message, but there is a point that here and I can see under the time can go. Time says comma cannot digest. Three times in a row. I define eight percent missing levels for all the variables. Yes. I got it. In danger. Okay. Just higher model. We guess the same time series. Extra X fix on the effect. Why it ran before? Why it doesn't work now? Let me just Use another data. Okay, it's continuous for it.
So there is a problem with the R model. I don't know. Wait. Okay. Next is it, coral, okay. Why am I losing my description? Panel model with the score card. Okay, this data, full value estimation, compiling standard test estimate and full value estimation, right, we have used. We didn't use it here. Uh, guys, then what I will do, I will search it because I don't know before it was given me. I don't want to waste the time doing this uh, here to find it. I don't know why it didn't work now, but it worked before. Very strange. Okay. So finally, the things that uh, we have to use uh, last two models. I will find it out and I'll, I'm gonna share the video with you. It's, it's actually, it's with one equation, that's it. You don't have to do anything. You just type this, this model with the IR1 and you get FGLS. So it gives you directly corrected for all problems. I'll find it out what is the issue related to this co correlation IR1, then we'll sort it out. And we said that when we are using this FGLS, we use when the number of observation, number of the cross sections are lower than the time, then we use this FGLS. However, if the number of cross section is lower than uh, time then we use uh, panel corrected standard errors and the for panel corrected standard errors is the simple as well uh, it's just p x t p c s e we put our variables and just core R1. I will do it like it's even one minute it will not take. It was the last part I wanted to just go with you. So uh, here what you should know that FGLS, it corrects for heteroscedasticity and it corrects for autocorrelation. And of course it corrects for cross-sectional dependency automatically. But when it comes to panel corrected standard error, it automatically includes this correction of heteroscedasticity. It only asks you to add the additional function, additional command like correction for autocorrelation in order of one. 
So this is what you do, that's it. When you run it, you get the result, you start interpreting. You interpret in the same way that you interpret the OLS. So I'll find a way how to do it. Uh, actually, I know, I knew, but the problem with this uh, core IR model, most probably it is related to, we need to download extra correction to IR models. Oh, let me just make like this. Find it. FGLS. Final data model by using GLS. Out of correlation structure. Panels specific R one at the correction structure. So panel variable must be specified for correlation structure. Other than independent, the time variable must be specified. The time variable must also be specified if panels correlated be specified. U sixty set. And the pendant variable may contain time series operators. C, you see what list. And pendant variables contain factor variables. C, factor variable list are also weight coefficients. Okay. General keys and I'm sorry guys, but I don't know what it happened like this. Why it's not running. Oops, that. ID is not regularly. Professor? Yes. Now, can we leave uh, five minutes earlier today? Uh, yes, you can leave actually, guys. I'm sorry for keeping you uh, for this issue, but 
once I finish, I'll, I'll go through it and I'll just upload it in the Moodle. I'll let you know. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Good evening. Bye.